All right. Well, uh, welcome to the Austin Spring Home and Garden Show webinar. This webinar is for exhibitors. And basically, the reason we do this webinar is to help our exhibitors be prepared for the show, answer some of the questions that we typically see uh, prior to a show, and hopefully help our exhibitors to be more successful in the show and um, enjoy their experience. So welcome to the webinar. We want to thank our sponsors and partners in the show. Um, the Austin Humane Society is one of our sponsors and they're going to uh, participate in the show in, in several different ways. We'll get into that in a little bit. And then um, Austin Affordable Floors, they are the online ticket sponsor for the show. So as people purchase tickets, they will have the opportunity to get a $2 discount to the show, and it will come up and let them know that that is compliments of Austin Affordable Floors. So they will also be able to ask a couple questions of people purchasing a ticket and the results from those will go um, back to their company. So they can ask, you know, if someone's looking to change their flooring in the next 12 months and then all the responses will get get back to them. So, so it can be a really great way to um, to advertise their business and stand out from um, other exhibitors. So we're we're grateful for those sponsors and partners in the show. Also, home light, um, which you'll see on our website. So, if um, just just so that people are aware, sponsorship opportunities at this point are really kind of past uh, because we've had to put in our sign um, order. But in the future, um, sponsorships can be a great way to set yourself up to uh, stand out from your competition. And it can be a great opportunity to really um, increase your footprint in the show and digitally. Uh, some of the examples of those sponsorship opportunities can be a presenting show sponsorship. That sponsorship is you would show up, it would be called the Austin Spring Home and Garden Show presented by your company. And it would be on all our advertising, TV, radio, billboards, everything. Uh, so that one's a really great one. Valet sponsor. So we can set up a valet area of the show and you you as your company could sponsor that uh, entrance sponsor. So you could be at the entrance and hand out um, bags or, or uh, flyers or something like that right as people come into the show. Uh, and then also the aisle sponsorship. So every single aisle that we have in the show can be sponsored by a company and um, and then they would have a sign that that hangs right from the aisle sign in each aisle, as well as floor decals. So those can be great ways to stand out. Um, please talk to me, uh, Dave Mon. I'm the show manager about sponsorship opportunities in the show, and that kind of leads me into the next thing, and that is the introduction. So this is the Austin Spring Home and Garden Show team. We've got uh, Laura Martin, who's a senior uh, exhibit sales consultant, uh, Lucy Ferguson, Curtis Brown, Paul Grazda. Those, they are all exhibit sales consultants. And then uh, Lindsay Reiners is the show coordinator. Lupe Marino is the assistant show manager. And um, Dave Mon, I'm, I'm the one on the end there. So Lindsay and Lupe are also on this uh, webinar with me, and they will have a chance to present as well. So that is that is the team that's running the this show. Um, today we're going to talk about tickets. We're going to talk about parking, entrances, move in, move out, how we market the show, uh, booth setup and rules, and then tips and tricks for a successful show. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn a little time over to Lindsay so that she can tell us a little bit more about what else is going on in the show. Thanks, Dave. 
All right, so just to get uh, things started here, let's talk about uh, COVID-19, just some um, updates. Um, masks still are required um, in Austin, so we ask that all show staff, exhibitors, attendees, facility staff, everybody still uh, wear your mask. And as we've been doing over the last couple of years, if you feel sick, please stay home. Just a reminder to um, wash your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, um, good hygiene practices. Um, we also um, want to make sure, you know, not a lot of handshaking, hugs, high fives, or uh, fist bumps, just to keep things <laughs> distanced so that we don't have to worry about um, COVID-19 spreading at our event. Um, okay, Dave, did you want to talk about unmanned booth spaces? Yeah, I think just, um, you know, that is that is something that we're understanding of right now. Did you want me to say it or were you going to talk about it? Lindsay? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to make sure I was giving the correct information here. Okay. So yeah, go ahead, Dave. OK, <laughs> so um, because obviously COVID exists and, and we're all very um, careful about um, people getting sick and, and worried about that, we are understanding if something comes up let's say you you had every anticipation to do the show and then um, someone in your office gets sick maybe someone who was supposed to work the show gets sick and because of it you don't have staff to work it we understand that that could happen and so we're we're far more lenient than we have been in the past where if that happens we would ask you to still set up your booth space but we're not going to require you to be there to be in your boost space that you know we would be understanding of that thanks dave okay so um this year we're going to have um some fun things on our fresh idea stage we do have a full stage schedule which we're excited about some of the highlights um we will have um, claire zinnaker who is from austin she'll be on the fresh idea stage on saturday um she's a designer and that'll be a fun opportunity to have her there. We'll also have a daily pet fashion show provided by the Austin Humane Society that we're super excited about. And Jim Dutton uh, will be doing a radio broadcast of his radio show on Saturday. So some things to look forward to on our stage. OK, and um, next thing I want to talk about is ticket prices and show hours. So the tickets are going to be $10 for adults at the box office. Um, you, adults can buy their tickets for $8 online, so a little bit of a discount there. Um, seniors can get their um, tickets at the box office for $8, but box office only for, um, for that senior discount. Um, and then children 16 and under are free. So bring, uh, it's, it's great for people to be able to bring their kids and not have to worry about that extra cost. Um, show hours Friday noon to 8, Saturday 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Sunday, the show will run from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And exhibitor tickets. So I have sent over uh, all the exhibitors. Um, I have sent over 20 complimentary tickets, so you should have received those. Um, check your spam if you don't see them in your inbox um, or just let me know if you haven't received them if there's been an issue and i'll resend but it's great uh, we have a ticket portal manager um, this is a fantastic way to to share tickets um, there's a unique portal login per exhibitor um, you're able to manage recipient and quantity so you can decide how many uh, tickets you want to forward on to um, your um, clients um, and you can also send individual invites um, bulk tickets and add a unique message um, another great feature is you can check um, if your tickets have been redeemed or not that you sent out so it gives you an idea of who is using them i would also i would also add uh, if you get to a point where you have given out all of your tickets you contact us if you would like to have more we can we can work something out to get you some more tickets if that if that happens absolutely yeah just let me know and i will send some more out to you lupe we want to take over from here sure i'd love to let's talk about parking 
Um, so as we know, parking in downtown Austin is a little bit of a headache. Ha ha. We do have the Palmer Event Center does have a parking structure that's right next to the venue. It has about 1200 spaces with two different entrances. So one on Riverside Drive and the other on Barton Springs Road. So you guys can park there. So can our consumers. There's obviously plenty of surface street parking and stuff like that as well. If that happens to be full. Um, the parking rate for that structure is $8 per vehicle during the show, and there is no overnight parking. So if you need to do overnight parking, do not stay there. You will probably be ticketed and or towed. So if you do need overnight parking, <clears throat> let us know and we'll see what we or, you know what we can help you figure out for that. Next slide, Dave. Thank you. Entrance and exit. So we have one entrance and exit for the show. It's through the main lobby. Um, you will also find will call and box office there. So at the will call or the show office, you can find your badges and any tickets that you need to leave for will call. And again, that'll be located there in the lobby. Will call will be open on Friday at 11 a.m. and will be open throughout the show, so Saturday and Sunday. And uh, like I said, you can get your badges there once the show is open, so you can enter the show or you can leave tickets there for your guests. Thank you. Temporary food licensing and sampling. For those of you who need to sample food, um, there was a, an application that was found on our exhibitor kit on our website that needed to be completed and submitted to Lindsay and approved by the venue um, and paid for. That deadline has passed. It was actually yesterday, so hopefully if you needed to have one of those, you got that turned in and are approved. If you didn't, it's probably a little too late for that, and so we'll need to work through that. So give either one of us a call or email and we can see how we can uh, facilitate that for you. Move in. You can find this move in map at your exhibitor kit. So if you go to the show's website, AustinSpringHomeAndGardenShow.com, scroll to the bottom, click on exhibitor kit, you can find this move in map there. As you can see, the first half of the show will move in on Wednesday between 8 and 7 p.m., 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. And there will be no drive and access in the green zone on Thursday. That will only be on Wednesday. So you can hand carry or cart in that section for Thursday and Friday. Um, Thursday is the yellow section. So you guys will be able to drive in 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. That's a lie. 8 a.m. to noon on Thursday. And you can continue your move out via cart uh, or hand carrying until 7. And then the little red zone there, that's right in front of the dock doors. You guys are what we would call LIFO, so the last in, first out section. Your drive-in will only be Thursday from 1230 to 2. Essentially, we would love for you to drive in, unload, and drive right back out and then come in and set up your booth. Um, as you can see, space is very limited, and we need to clear the vehicle so that the decorator can lay the aisle carpet and we can continue getting ready for the show open on Friday. Move out instructions are at the bottom there. You can see. Whoa. OK, hi. Um, <laughs> so move in. We we won't allow any vehicle drive in access until eight o'clock or once the carpet is rolled up. So whichever happens sooner. Um, once the carpet's rolled up, we'll allow drive in into the facility. In the meantime, in those two hours from between six and eight, we do ask that you Completely, you can tear down, you can pack up, you can get ready, you can hand carry your cart out. Um, but we do ask you try to stay off of the aisle carpet as much as possible to allow the decorator to roll up the carpet. The sooner they can get that out, the sooner we can allow vehicles to come in. And again, you also can move out on Monday between 8 a.m. and noon. We do need to be clear of the facility by noon on Monday. So if you can't get that done Monday, at least you can start prepping Sunday night and come back and pick it up on Monday. If you're in the red zone, you do have to pack up and move out on Sunday. We need that area cleared so vehicles can come in and your booth doesn't get ran over or hit or in the line of fire, so to speak. Next, if you have any questions, you can find all of our contact info here. Dave, Lindsay and myself, our phone numbers and emails. We're happy to help you get any questions answered. And if you have something that we didn't cover, let us know and we'll, we'll get you taken care of. Awesome. All right. Um, so next, we, we like to talk about how we market the show. That's that's one of the questions that comes up pretty frequently. 
Uh, a lot of people like to ask how we market the show. And I think uh, as COVID has had a, a big impact on uh, live events and and uh, consumer shows, we wanted to point out that we spend at least as much money, if not more, than what we spent before in advertising the show. And that includes TV, radio, billboards, digital. It includes uh, OTT ads, so like those ads that maybe you see on Hulu TV or Sling or or YouTube. Um, all of we also advertise on those, and we also do mailers. Um, so I wanted to show you a couple examples of billboards that we have up in Austin right now. These are actually a couple billboards that we have um, that you might be able to see when you're just driving around. And then I think I think the one is on Lamar. Um, that's that's where one of those ones are. And then um, we also send out mailers. So RSVP and Valpac. Uh, both we have mailers in both of those um, publications, and um, this is an example of what they look like. So we've got it on TV, radio, uh, billboards, internet, um, Facebook ads, and also RSVP and Valpac. So we understand uh, advertising the show and getting the the um, getting it out there to the consumers is extremely important and it, it's extremely important to you as exhibitors. We also do a couple other things um, and that is on Friday, we call it Hero Day and we uh, have it open, basically a free ticket to uh, veterans as well as first responders, police and firefighters. And I've actually gone and talked to the police department and firefighters as well as um, the first responders and veterans in Austin and talked with those organizations, let them know about that Hero Day on Friday and um, had some really great response. And so I'm very hopeful that we'll have a lot of those people coming to the show and help to bolster our Friday. And then we also do, uh, on Sunday, we we do a teacher day, teacher appreciation day. And so all of the teachers who any, any school district employee gets into the show for free on Sunday. And I've also talked to every single one of the, the, uh, the schools in the school district about that and, um, and let them know ab about teacher day. So, we're really hopeful that we'll see a lot of those teachers on Sunday as well. Uh, another way that you can um, help yourself when it comes to the show is to set up your virtual uh, exhibitor listing. So it's a digital exhibitor profile or listing, and you should have already received an email about that and set that up. If you haven't, please contact us and let us know and we can get that sent over to you. The reason this is important is so many people go to our website and maybe they went to the show already and then they lost your contact information. And so they go back to the website to find out who it was that they talked to to get your contact information. Or there's a lot of people that don't even come to the show but still shop the show by going to that virtual showroom. So it's really important for you to get that set up. We encourage everyone to do that. That's especially true for this show because we're doing something new where everyone that comes to the show will be able to scan a QR code that's going to be located at your booth space. And they can go and save to their favorites some of the exhibitors that they want to talk to or want additional information from. And then at the end of the show, they'll have that list of those companies and it will be linked to that exhibitor listing. So really important that, that everyone gets that set up. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you can you do that now. If there's any other, uh, other questions, as Lupe mentioned before, you can contact uh, either myself, Lindsay, or Lupe, and that's our contact information there. Uh, Lindsay, I think you're up. All right, so I just wanted to go over uh, exhibit like an expert. Here's some do's. 
So please do use floor covering to cover your entire booth space. We don't want any of it showing. It looks so much better if you keep that covered. Um, do stay within your contracted space. Um, we would like all um, tables professionally skirted on all uh, or your tables professionally skirted on all four sides. Um, do use professionally made signage. Please don't draw your own signs. Um, have it professionally made and printed. Uh, do staff your booth during show hours, aside from um, if there's an issue with COVID, as Dave mentioned before, but we would like somebody at your booth um, while you are uh, at the show this weekend. A few electrical do's and don'ts. So if you can look at the uh, pictures here, give some ideas of what uh, to do and what not to do. We definitely don't want to have any fire hazards here, so please pay attention to how you are using um, your um, electronics, what you're plugging in, um, and please um, don't daisy chain. Um, just make sure you do um, use your surge protectors like how it's shown in the pictures here so that we can avoid any type of fire hazards. Um, Moving on to the next slide, um, exhibitor service needs. So if you need to order things such as electricity, gas, water, phone, internet, um, have your signs hanged, um, you can do that, or food sales, food sampling um, through the Palmer Events Center. Um, as we mentioned, it is past the food um, sampling deadline. So hopefully you have that taken care of already. Reach out to us if, uh, if you forgot to do that, we might be able to see what we can do to help with that. But if you need any of these things, you'll order it from the Palmer Event Center. There is a link on the exhibitor kit on our website where you can do that. Um, for decorator services, you'll need to order from GEMS, uh, things such as furnishings, booth cleanings, carpet and under padding, specialty furnishing, furnishings, signs and graphics, installation and dismantling labor. And if you need a forklift, those are all things that you can order from GEMS. Also, there is a link on the exhibitor kit uh, on our website where you can order these things. Um, and just a few reminders for you. Um, please make sure that your booth, um, the standard booth includes eight um, foot high back drape and three foot side back drape um, and uh, consisting of pipe and drape, electric tables, chairs, flooring, water, telephone, internet. Those are not included with your exhibit space. So as I mentioned before, you'll have to order those things. So keep that in mind. Um, please make sure nothing exceeds eight feet um, in your booth, unless you are on a perimeter wall or if you have a 2020 booth or larger. Um, as I mentioned before as well, all signs must be professionally made. Um, it just looks so much better that way. Handwritten signs are not allowed. Um, and all exhibit booth walls are to be completely finished on both sides. We don't want any wires or frames or anything um, showing or being exposed for the, the public or for your neighbor to see. We want everything to look um, nice and organized there. Dave, I think it's uh, back to you. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. All right. So uh, I've, I've been to a lot of shows and I've seen a ton of exhibitors and I can tell you there's a few things that really stand out on those that are successful and those who are not. Uh, one of one of those things is booth location matters. So understanding you'll you'll see as people do shows multiple years and those that are really successful with it they know where to be located in the boot in, in the floor plan and know um, what works best for their company so paying attention to booth location matters we sell our booth spaces on a first come first serve, serve basis so anyone who is in the show will have a chance to renew their booth space by sunday night if they don't renew their booth booth space by Sunday night, anyone else can take that booth space. They can they can contract it and get it. So really important for you to renew your booth space early. And if you have another space in mind, preferential treatment is given to whoever signs up first. So um, booth location matters. Next. Be approachable in your booth space. I can't tell you how many times I've been to a show where I look at someone and they're eating in their booth space or, uh, or they're on their phone or they're glaring at something or they just look so unapproachable. And um, or it, like I, I've I've just seen, especially 
people who hire someone to come in and um, be in their booth space or some of those people leave early or don't show up, um, that really has a big impact on the success of the show. So make sure you're in your booth space and you're you're welcoming and inviting to the public. The next is display and focus on what you want to sell. So I, so many companies have a lot of offerings. They, they'll, they have maybe 10 to 15 products that they sell and they overwhelm the consumer with the number of things that they're selling. It's best to focus on what you do and what you do best. Obviously, you can offer those other things, but focus on what you do best. Get those people to buy whatever that is, and then maybe you could sell them some of those extra things. Just like think about when you go to McDonald's, they don't they ask you to supersize it or whatever. I hope that's not too old. I never go to McDonald's, but anyway, that that is something they'll do afterwards after the initial sell. So um, keep that in mind. People want a consultant, not a salesperson. If people feel like they're being sold to, they're far less likely to buy than if they feel like the person that they're talking to just simply wants to help them out and help them with a need that they have. So make sure that you're helping them as opposed to selling to them. Next is ask questions and listen to what people say. All of us have had opportunities to be sold to and I don't know how many times it happens to you, but I know it happens to me all the time where people, when they sell to me, they don't, they have a predetermined script and they go through that and they don't really ask me questions and they don't try to understand what it is that I'm looking for. Those that do far better at selling. So make sure you do that. Have a goal and measure the success. I don't, I can't tell you how many people I, I talk to after the show and they tell me, you know, when I ask them how the show went for them, they can't really tell me because they don't have a goal and they don't know how to measure their success. So have metrics in place to be able to measure their your success. And then the last thing, follow up. It makes no sense to come do the show, get a ton of leads, and then never follow up with those people. Make sure that you follow up. Uh, the last thing here, we've got a show office. Um, it will be near the entrance to the show. If you have questions, please find us at the show office. Um, we're, the show office will be open Wednesday and Thursday during move-in, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and then Sunday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, that is our presentation. I think, I don't know, Lupe, Lindsay, what do you guys think? I think people who got through this much information deserve something, don't you think? Absolutely, they've been bored to death for the last 20 minutes. We should definitely give them some form of prize. I would think so too. What do you think? What would be appropriate? Hmm. I, I love candy bars. Oh, okay. So maybe All right. we could, uh, we could uh, hand out a candy bar. Okay, I like it. So uh, let's do this. Anyone who got through this and listened to this whole thing, we want to say thank you. And by saying thank you, approach any of the three of us. Let us know that you're looking for your candy bar and we will get you a candy bar at the show. So look forward to that. We'll have an assortment of them so that, so that we can try to get the one that you want. I hope we give them all away because if not, I'm going to eat them and that's just not going to be good. <laughs> but take pity on Lupe and make <laughs> sure that you watch this whole thing and come get your candy bar. All right. Thanks, everyone. We're looking forward to seeing you next week in, in the Austin Spring Home and Garden Show. If you have any questions, please reach out to us and let us know. Thanks for watching.